Hi friends, prepared suburbanite here. This weekend, my wife and I had the opportunity to attend the RK Preppers Survival Expo at the Wake County, at the North Carolina uh, State Fairgrounds, uh, right here in Raleigh. And uh, we had um, a terrific time. There was a lot of great vendors, a lot of great exhibitions, and a lot of great presenters. Had the occasion on Saturday to sit through Bob Gaskin's presentation on um, survival after the S hits the fan. He had a follow-up seminar on Sunday, which we went to, and with Bob's permission, um, I taped the whole thing. It's called The Morals of Survival. Facing Scenarios After a Society Ending Event and it took place at the North Carolina State Fairgrounds on July 10th, 2016. Bob's energetic and enthusiastic presentation on the morals of survival will change how you approach your prepping strategy. He asks and answers the really tough questions of survival and humanity and your role as a responsible prepper. Bob explores his theory on the end of the world as we know it, what will cause it, and its impact on each and every one on the planet. His total presentation is over an hour long, and I've split it up into four different segments for your viewing convenience. Each segment is profound, well thought out, and sobering, to say the least. First, I'd like to apologize for the audio quality. We were in an exhibit hall um, in the um, exposition um, center at the fairgrounds, and um, where, the, where Bob put out his presentation, there was an overhead air handler that was very, very noisy, very, very loud. And on top of that, during the presentation on a number of occasions, the show MC was making announcements of upcoming events and this and that, and um, that would kind of drown out uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, voice quality that uh, uh, Bob delivered. So a little bit about Bob. Bob Gaskin is the owner of Black Dog Survival School, the author of Society Ending Events, the author of Morals of Survival, and co-author of Developing the Warrior Mindset. In addition to being a U.S. Marine, Bob's also a wilderness survival instructor, a cold weather wilderness survival instructor, an urban survival instructor, and a national speaker on family preparedness. I'll put links in, um, in the videos to his YouTube channel, his Facebook page, and to Amazon for his books on that subject matter. So join me as we get into part one of Bob's presentation. All of that needs to stop. Okay? I say that because it doesn't matter what is going to happen and it doesn't matter when it happens. If you're ready for it to happen, and I'm not just talking about with stuff, right? Guys, you can have all the food, water, fire, shelter, first aid, and hygiene. You can have a Walmart in your basement, okay? It, it's not going to last, and it's not going to save your life, and it's not going to save your wife's life, and it's not going to save your children's lives, and it's not going to save your grandchildren's lives if you're not mentally and emotionally prepared for what we are facing. And as long as you're giving in and wasting your time watching things like I won't mention any names because I don't like to talk bad about people, but Vincent Finelli, Glenn Beck, and Alex Jones, right? You're going to die. And it's just that simple. And men, when you die, your wives are going to die. And when your wives die, your kids are going to die if they're lucky. Because if they're not lucky, they're going to have to resort to all kinds of stuff that we don't want our children doing just to be able to eat. Okay? Now, real quick before we get into it, I see a couple other people videoing. Here's the thing. This guy's videoing back here. What's your YouTube channel? Uh, Prepared Suburbanite. Prepared Suburbanite. That's the YouTube channel? Yes, sir. Okay. And you're going to title this what? Bob Gaskin. Uh, 
Raleigh and the date. There we go. Okay, so it'll be Bob Gaskin, Raleigh, North Carolina, and the date. Okay, so you can record if you want. I got no problems with that, but that's a pretty nice camera, and he's got a pretty good mic, and it's going to be a pretty good video. So you don't have to record it if you don't want to. It's up to you. Um, but the, what what I was trying to get across to everybody yesterday is. We need to stop with the fear mongering and we need to stop with being a playtime prepper. And if you're just a hoarder with an excuse, you really need to stop. It, take your spouse on a nice vacation, forget about prepping because you're just not going to survive, right? We need to recognize that we're going to lose people. We need to recognize that we're going to watch people die, people that are close to us. And if we're not prepared to go through that mentally and emotionally, then when it happens, we're going to shut down, and when we shut down, our defenses shut down, and when our defenses shut down, what happens? And then what happens? We die. We die. Okay? If we're lucky. Because if we're not lucky, then when we shut down and we can't function and operate, that somebody close to us is going to die. Right? So, yesterday, the, the goal of the class, the purpose of the class, was to get you all to change the way you think. And part of that healing process, okay, to get over the, the, the mental illness that most, most preppers go through, that I went through for years. Guys, I was the biggest fanatic there was, okay? And for those of you that weren't here yesterday, a fanatic is somebody that can't change their mind and won't change the topic, right? And if you walk into a room and people get up and leave, it's because you're a fanatic. We laugh about that. But the problem is, is that when we face a society in an event and those people die, it's your fault. If you're a fanatic and people won't listen to you and start getting prepared because of the way you address the situation, when those people die, it's your fault. Everybody with me so far? Have I lost anybody? So we have to change the way we think. We have to understand that we need other people, right? All of those friends we've lost because they said they're coming to our house when the shimmer hits the fan and we said, if I see it coming, I'll put a bullet in your head. That friendship ended right then, right? Every one of those people that die, it's our fault. And it's on our shoulders. See, when we face a society in an event, and I know what's coming, and I know when it's coming, and I know how it's coming, and I'm ready for it. But I don't care what's coming, and I don't care when it's coming, and I don't care how it comes, because I'm ready for it. And as long as I'm not in the wrong place at the right time, that first day, that extra first 37 minutes, I'll survive. And I'll survive because I've gone through all of this stuff. I've, I've dealt with it. I've seen the worst humanity has to offer, and I've seen the best humanity has to offer. And I know that the people that survive the catastrophes are the ones that give their best, not the ones that give their worst, okay? So I know what to expect and when it's coming, and that's why I'm gonna survive it. My goal today is to get y'all to recognize, for those of you that didn't change your minds yesterday and the way you thought yesterday, we're gonna spend a couple minutes getting you to change the way you think today, and then we're gonna start focusing on changing the way you prep, because I had people come up to me yesterday. One man made my day Com completely I'm going to be honest with you. My wife and I were driving out here this week after doing a Prepper Expo in Springfield, Missouri two weeks ago. And I told her I'm done. I'm 18 years I've been doing this now. You know, six years doing shows, 11 years doing doing expo, or, uh, survival training, 18 years talking to people, trying to get them to become better people. And if you live in Springfield, Missouri, and you've sat through all of my training seminars I've done there, and all of the times I've spoken at expos there, and listened to every time my radio show was on, you have over 390 hours of my time. And I still have these people coming up to me at the expo going, well, Bob, what about Planet X? Well, Bob, what about FEMA call? Well, Bob, what about FEMA camps? Because Alex Jones says, and I was done. I, I was. I, I, guys, I'm telling you, this was going to be my absolute last expo. I, I, I was done. Because people just, they don't get it. They're going to die, and they refuse to do anything to keep from dying. Right? And, and this guy came up to me yesterday, and he says, Bob, he says, I was one of those people until this moment. I, I 
I was going to kill everybody that came trying to take my stuff, and I wasn't going to share with anybody. I was. That's how we're all taught to think. He says, and, and you, you've changed the way I think. My problem is, is I don't know where to begin to be different. I don't know what to do next. And when we got back to the camper last night, I told my wife, I said, yeah, we're, we're going to keep going. So, I can't remember who he was, but if you're here, thank you. Okay, because it kind of restored my faith in what we're doing here. Because it's, it's hard, okay? It's going to be hard enough when we face a society and the, the people that didn't listen, that night when I go to bed, I will know that they are dead. And even though they made that choice, right? For me, it's still on my shoulders. Because apparently I didn't say the right thing or do the right thing or set the right example to get them to change so that they could survive. The flip side is, is that first night after a society event, I'll still sleep like a baby. Because there's thousands upon thousands of people that are preppers today that weren't preppers before I started talking to them. Because when they said to me, well, I'm just coming to your house, my response was, come on. You show up with nothing but the shirt on your back, come with everything you own. Come on. I got a place for you. I've prepared for you. I have a place for you to lay your head. I have a job for you to do. Come on. So because of that, I'm okay. My question for you is, that first night when you're laying in bed, or in your sleeping bag, or curled up in the back seat of your car on the side of a road somewhere, what's going to be going on in your head? Are you going to be feeling good about the people that you recruited into being a prepper? The people who have a chance of surviving that night? Or are you going to be weeping as all of the faces pass through your, your mind of the people that are dead because you are a fanatic? That's the worst time to make an announcement. Gonna pause for a quick commercial break. If you don't have a good fire starter kit, come get one of mine. I took that and my PSK and my uh, SE6 knife in the Smoky Mountains for five days. That's all I took. No food, no water, no tent, no backpack. I took my fire starter kit. Did you get that? Where'd it go? Okay, well one of y'all did it. Um, I took my fire starter kit, I took my personal survival kit, and I took my SE6 knife. And both those kits fit in the pouch on my SE6 knife. We sell those, we sell medical supplies. Got everything you need. Um, emergency blankets, preparedness supplies. So I got three percenters in the house today. Three percent. There we go. We sell patches. Got all kinds of patches. There you go. Any single moms? I got any single moms in the house. Got a single mom back here. We sell food, guys. No GMOs. No preservatives. Longest shelf life. Stored under the highest temperatures. And we have the only food sold, made, processed, grown, raised right here in the United States. You can leave in the trunk of your car for seven years. This is yours. That's our meat and protein bucket, 60 servings of whole eggs, uh, 60 servings of chicken, 36 servings of ground beef, and 24 servings of Jimmy Dean sausage. Awesome stuff. I eat it on a regular basis. Um, again, no GMOs, no preservatives, no growth hormones, none of that crap is going to kill you. Good stuff in 180 servings we sell for $2.99. We got on the sale this week for $200. Okay, so now I've done my little commercial break. So somebody after this class stop by the table. You can. Tell my wife I talked about our products. We're good. That gets me out of the doghouse. So the point of the story is, is how are you going to survive? How are you going to face the tragedies? Okay? So we all have that neighbor, right, that ridicules us for being preppers. Who doesn't have that neighbor? Did we go over this scenario yesterday? We did. Okay, let's give you a different scenario. So in our neighborhood of 60 people, there's one neighbor that's a prepper. We know this because together we go to the prepper shows, we have a good time, we go to the gun range, we get together once a month over coffee, we talk about preps, yada, 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 yada. Okay? In his garage is his get home vehicle with the bulk of his preps already loaded, ready to go. Right? 
seems like pretty simple. Most of us have that, right? Or at least have our stuff staged, ready to go, right? Okay. Um, three days before society and event, he and his entire family get on an airplane, go to Fort Lauderdale, board an eight-day cruise. They're in the Caribbean when the Schumer hits the fan. Everybody with me so far? Okay, so on day 22, you're, uh, you're laying in bed that night and you're hearing the gunfire going on in the street behind you, and you're hearing the women and the children screaming as they're being raped and abused and beaten, and a big party going on with all of the looters. So you decide that morning that you and your family are going to get everything loaded and staged and ready to go because the looters do what? They sleep during the day, right? Because they party all night, right? So you've made up your mind that the next morning you're going to get out of Dodge and you're going to go. And while you're laying in bed that night, listening to all the gunfire and everything going on behind you and the people being raped and abused and murdered and all that kind of fun stuff, you hear somebody enter your garage, right? And then you hear your car start. And little Johnny and little Susie come running into your bedroom for your protection so you can't leave them to go deal with the threat because you have to protect them should the threat advance, right? Everybody with me so far? And you get up the next morning and all your stuff's gone. But across the street, you have a neighbor that has all of his stuff staged and ready to go. Right? And he's on a boat in the middle of the Caribbean. What do you do? He says salvage because we had that conversation earlier. Guys, there's a difference between looting and salvaging, okay? Looting is when I come into your house, I kill you or beat you or hold you at gunpoint and forcibly take your stuff, okay? That is looting. That is bad. We should all be shot for doing so. Salvaging is when she has abandoned her home to go to her get out of Dodge location. I'm trying to get home. I see an abandoned home. I go inside. I take only what I need and can carry, leaving the rest for the next person, and the next day I move on. Right? This is called salvaging, so that's why he said we salvage what we can. I like that. You don't get to answer more questions. You already had the prequel to this. What do you do? You take your neighbor's stuff. The only other prepper in the neighborhood. The man that's been your best friend for years as you go to gun ranges and prepper shows and gun shows and you prep together and you can do it yourself, projects together. At least take what I need. You at least take what you need. What do you do? He ain't home. He ain't home. He might not come home. Well, you can't answer because you were in my class last year. Okay, but I don't remember. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Hopefully you've already had this. No, 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 stop. You're not allowed to answer that question. You were in my class last year. Yeah, but I've slept a lot of times. I hear you. <clears throat> the problem is, is you both have a get out of Dodge location that you're part of, and seven months after the event, he comes showing up, missing his left hand, missing his wife and his two children, who were all alive when they got home, and all of their stuff was gone. And moving on foot to the get out of Dodge location is what cost the lives of his children and his wife and caused him to lose his left hand. In that moment, how are you going to feel? In that moment. Let's put that one off to the side. So we're in our home and that neighbor that's always coming and ridiculing you for being a prepper shows up on your doorstep on day nine and he asks if you have any food for little three-year-old Susie and little six-year-old Johnny. What do you do? Feed him. What do you do? Be honest, because we're going to change the way you think here today, guys. If you're not honest today, you'll never be honest, and you'll die. So if you want to live, be honest. What do you do? Because for years, I just shot him. You don't have enough to share. What do you do? Share what you got. What do you do? Share what you have. What do you do? Okay, so let's say you don't share. Okay, because let's think about it, right? When I started prepping, I had a wife and two daughters. My mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, and another four people. When I had two years supplies for my family, if I allowed them to come to my house, I cut my two years supply down to one year supply. Then on my side, I had my mother, my father, my brother, his wife, his two children, and my sister and her husband at the time. I think that was number, that was number two at the time. It was number three at the time. 
that's another eight people. And they showed up, I just now cut all of my preps down to six months, right? You know, follow where that's going. It doesn't take long before your two years of preps become a week and a half. Okay? So anyhow, let's say you don't share with them. And then a week later, you're heading to your bug out location, and little six-year-old Johnny's out in the front yard bearing little three-year-old Susie next to the tree she liked to play under. And when you stop and say, what are you doing? He says, I'm burying Susie. She died this morning. Well, where are your parents? I buried them in the backyard yesterday. 